Welcome back to Anchor Designs. I'm James, and today we are going to be restoring our Tyler Miner spiral bandsaw. Let's get started. Okay, so this is what we're going to be working on today. This is a very, very small uh, bandsaw, and originally this was designed to take um, spiral blades, and they're not very easy accessible to actually buy anymore and it wasn't a particularly good saw back in its day from what I can understand uh, and it was used a single blade across that was designed to move in all different uh, directions uh, the problem with that is that the blades blunted very very easily and it destroyed the uh, the actual tires on the blades themselves so as a bit of a project what I wanted to do is see if I can convert this over to take standard um, bands, uh, which you know I think would be quite a nice interesting project. We've got to do a full restore on this, check um, all the bushings, all the mechanical side of it, repaint it, get it working again and then also design and build a, um, a, a new a blade guide assembly. So this was for round previously, if you can see that, and then we're going to make a more traditional style um, bearing uh, guide assembly. So uh, First off, we're going to break everything down. I'm going to show you some ideas that I've got for this video. What we're going to be doing is mainly restoring the actual uh, bandsaw itself. We're going to be checking the motor out and we're also going to be trying to retire these. And I have got some few ideas and a few failed attempts already that I've been doing off camera. But uh, let's jump straight into it and start disassembling the saw. So I'm now at the stage where I need to remove either the this side or the other side of the pulley. Um, but because it's aluminium, we've got to be really, really careful. And there's no indication that this had, uh, there's no keyway, there is no set screw or anything on the other side. So I believe that these were probably uh, pressed in uh, to fit. Now I'm going to heat this up as well as gradually start applying minute bits of pressure because I believe this is probably either a friction or a shrunk on fit. So we're just going to apply a little bit of heat and not crank down too hard on this because you will damage this wheel. And that would be a very short video.
two hours later. Okay, so we have everything polydisc off. Um, I've put a little bit of paint stripper in some of the more harder to reach areas. There's still a little bit of work to go, but I am really pleased with the result. I did toy with the idea of leaving this and just polishing it up, but cameras and shiny surfaces just don't really go that well, as well as the reasoning behind this was like a hammerite-ish, you know, hammered effect paint is that the castings were pretty poor on these. So I think a lot of the, the hammered surface is gonna hide a lot of the, um, you know, the indentations, um, stuff like this is the, not the porosity, but the poor casting marks. So uh, color was a big factor. I've only got two types of hammered paint and one is gold and the other one is this green color. So I'm gonna opt for green, which is this stuff. Uh, Hammerite do say that I should use their proper stuff uh, to actually prime this for different uh, materials such as aluminium or magnesium, whatever this is. So I'm just going to use some etch primer and then we're going to follow up with uh, just brush painting this so we, we can get into the uh, bad areas. Before we start that, we're going to mask up everything uh, that we don't want to be painted, such as the threads. Um, ball holes and that type of thing. You might be wondering as well why I didn't take off the the door assembly here and because aluminium is so soft and to be honest there's not a lot of material either side of these if you bend them or these become out of shape then you're never going to get those right again. Just looking at how this was actually made and assembled by the looks of it that this would have probably been clamped together, put on some sort of jig and then machined out from the top. And if you take these out and then you're gonna have a bit of play. At the minute, it feels great and there's no kind of marks or problems with it. The uh, bushings themselves are gonna be fine. I'm not gonna replace those. Uh, the shaft, is, there's no marks or problems. I think this saw has probably had very little use. Things like the bed's not been cut up or, or there's no real damage most of it was all cosmetic um, and not really put under much use so enough talking let's uh, let's get this painted up and uh, move on to the next stage
two hours later. the next day. Well guys, that's going to have to be a wrap. This video has taken a lot longer than I thought and it's just going to drag on and it's going to be another 35-40 minute video by the time that we've finished. It's kind of restored 90% of it. This was never going to be a usual bandsaw restoration because it's not a usual bandsaw. So, I hope you like this 90% restoration um, of this. We've still got the motor to fiddle around with. The Most of this has been restored. We need to put the tyres onto, um, onto the wheels. And it's non-standard, of course. So, we're going to have to be experimenting with some other options. So, I'm going to do that on the next video. I'll keep those separate. Um, and I think that's probably going to work out the better for you know, the viewing experience. But we will have this running, and when we do get the wheels back on, we'll also be doing a video on machining the blade guide. So, I'm super excited for that. I'm super excited for this little mini saw. Um, I have got some blades for it, which is fantastic. So if you did like what you see and you're looking forward to the future episode, then please do hit subscribe, give me a like, and uh, really enjoyed this episode. I hope you did, and we will see you next time. Thank you.